onto the asteroid? So this is a, this is a good question. So So let's consider the following equation. Oh, equals. Now, this equation here, A is a positive constant. The graph, or I guess the curve associated with that equation, it describes a special curve known as an asteroid, not to be confused with an asteroid. Okay? Um, the asteroid comes from the Greek uh, star like shape. So what happens is it looks a little bit like this. Now, to get this shape, I've drawn it pretty badly here. What happens is, imagine there's a big circle going around here, and you've got a little circle that's rolling around the inside of the circle. Okay, it's a little bit, a little bit hard to explain. But um, yeah, it's, it, the, the, the dynamics of, of creating this asteroid is really quite, quite beautiful. Now, we're asked to calculate the arc length. So in part A, we do that using um, um, uh, a parameterized form. Okay, so let's solve it that way. So here are our parameterized type equations. Now the theta here is between 0 and 2 pi, okay? So you can think of that sort of doing one revolution. Okay, so to compute the arc length of the curve, what we're going to do is actually um, uh, just basically compute one of these lengths and then multiply by four. Okay. So what's the actual formula? Well, So we're going to use this setup here. So let's call that double star. So all we need to do is go here, calculate our derivatives, square them, add them together, and then see if we can simplify. Now, obviously, when we differentiate these things and square them, we're going to get some pretty um, involved functions. OK, but hopefully, hopefully, we can manage this square root sign away. So let's let's do that. Alright, so to differentiate this, remember A is a constant here. It's this one's gonna be, okay, well you bring the three to the front, bring the derivative of cos to the front and change the three to a two. So um, it's gonna be something like minus three A sine theta cos squared theta. Does that look right? And y prime of theta, so bring the 3 to the front, bring the derivative of sine to the front, and decrease the power by 1. So that's going to be um, 3a cosine theta sine squared theta. So as you can see, it's pretty messy, right? We have to square those and add them together. But don't be fooled, things are actually going to simplify quite nicely.
OK, so let's. Do our calculations. Now, we've got a common factor of 9a squared. And these don't quite match up. But what I'm going to do is I'm turn this cosine theta all to the power 4 into cos squared times cos squared, and then change one of the cos squareds to 1 minus sine squared. Okay. So I'm just going to change this to cos squared, cos squared, and then change one of the cos squareds to 1 minus sine squared theta. I mean, I'm sure you can do this. Uh, I'm sure you can do this other ways, right? Now, if you expand this, this term is going to cancel with one of these terms. So I'm only going to be left with um, sine squared theta cos squared theta. Now, we're in a good position here because you've got to take the square root of this and then integrate it. So I've got all squares, right? So let's sub back into double star, integrate from 0 to pi on 2, and then we'll multiply the whole thing by 4. So what we're doing is we're calculating this, yeah, this length here, and then we'll multiply it by 4 to get the, the final answer. So I can take the square roots. So we're pretty happy about that. And remember, a is a constant so and greater than 0. And the other nice thing about keeping it in this, in this interval here is that you don't need to worry about absolute values here. That's the other advantage in this approach, right? If you was You'd have to worry, oh, when is sine positive and when is it negative and when is cosine positive, when is it negative. But here, we don't need to worry about that because these are both non-negative. So I can t integrate this a number of ways. You can integrate this by parts. You can integrate it using a double angle formula. So you would change this to something like um, a half sine 2 theta. Or you can just um, um, integrate it by inspection using uh, the chain rule backwards, right? The, Substitution. So I'm, that's the way I'm going to do it. So this will go to something like sine squared theta over 2. OK? So you can do this one, at least three different ways. So if you sub in then, you're going to get, um, th this is going to give you 1 half in here, so 3a on 2. Now that's one, that's one part of the curve. The total arc length is 4L. You should get 6 times A. OK, so that was the case where we used a parameterization to calculate the arc length, right? In the next part, in part B, what they ask you to do is actually use the function approach. So you want to rearrange this start equation and make y the subject, y equals f of x, and then use the slightly different arc length formula. So this is a little bit harder, a little bit more involved. So let's have a look at this. In particular, if you do it that way, um, you've got to look at what's known as an improper integral. So to set you up for that, they ask you to compute the following improper integral. OK. 
okay, the following improper integral. So I'm going to just denote this to be i. So the, the, the potential problem is that at x equals 0, okay, because our, our integrand, the function that we're integrating, um, isn't defined at x equals 0. So think back to first semester. An improper integral can just be written as a limit Now, this improper integral exists if this limit exists, okay? So you do what's in the brackets first, do the integration first, and then the last thing you do is you take the limit. That's the last thing you do. So let's integrate here and see how we go. Now notice I'm, I'm approaching zero from the right-hand side. That's because we're integrating from 0 to 1. If we were integrating, say, from minus 1 to 0 or something, it would be 0 minus here. All right, so let's integrate. So increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power. So if I put in x equals 1, I'll get just uh, 3 on 2 here. Put in x equals h, I'll get the following. Okay, so what's our limit going to be then? 3 on 2, because this goes to 0 as h goes to 0. So, now the, the significance in this result is that we're going to use this in the second part of this question. Okay, so that's why they kind of just get you to do this little check to see that this improper integral actually is, you know, exists. Okay, so in part ii, what we do is we take this star equation and make y the subject. So just basically we rearrange this, make y the subject, and then use the um, arc length formula in that form. So this is our function of x now. And the interval that we're interested in, the x, in, the x interval, is from 0 to a. So to compute the arc length, we use the following. Now I'm going to use C and D here. In, in the previous, well I guess the first example I used A and B, but A, the A could be confused with that, so I'm going to use C and D here. Okay, so let's take the derivative. So it's going to be a little bit messy. So what are we going to get? The 3 on 2 is going to come to the front. The derivative of what's in here is going to come to the front. And I'm going to decrease the 3 on 2 by 1. So what am I going to get? Um, how does that look? That look all right? I can cancel some of these off. So 1 plus this all squared Okay, it's going to be 1 plus all this squared. Now the square root, the 1 half is going to cancel off. Uh, this is going to, the minus here is going to go to positive. 
this is going to go to minus two thirds. Okay. Now, if you expand this, you'll see, well, this second term is going to become 1. So I'm going to get 1 minus 1, and I'm just left with one basic term here. Hmm. So, to calculate the total curve, the length of the curve, what I'm going to do is, you know, do this on this interval. And, then mul and multiply by 4. So I'm just going to combine that into one step now. Okay, so this is going to go in here now. Okay. Now, I can clean up the indices with the square root sign. So I can, and remember, A is a constant. So this is going to go to x to the minus one third. Now, this integral over here is what we just did in part i. Okay. The only difference was in part i, we were integrating from 0 to 1, not 0 to a. But irrespective, we know that this is well defined. Okay. So we can go through and do the normal integration procedures. So let's just integrate here. Okay. So I'm sort of abusing some of the no notation there, but, but then when you sub in, you'll get the following. So you can bring out um, the 3 on 2, and you get 6a to the 1 third. Now when you put in x equals 0, you get 0, and then it's just a to the 2 thirds. So what are we going to get here? 6a, right? We should get the same answer that we got for part a. So that, that, I guess that question is designed to show you that you can do these calculations sometimes two different ways, depending on what you prefer.